Oh, I did it again. I did it again. Oh my goodness, Calvin. Thank you. Whenever I do a raid, I just sort of mute my mic. And that's where I leave Streamlabs. So when I open it up, I always forget to... Uh, not always, but I usually forget to unmute my mic. Oh my goodness, Calvin. Thank you for stopping in when you did. And maybe I should make that uh, my first thing. Check to make sure I'm not muted. Add it to my list. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, that was about nine minutes of me talking. Just completely muted. <sighs> yep, 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 yep. Terrific. Anyway, uh, uh, geez, I just feel like starting over again, I guess. Maybe I can edit this when it goes to YouTube. But welcome to episode 23 of Live Coding. I am your host, Matt Groves, here to answer your questions, here to talk about UDFs, user defined functions today. And we're going to update ASP.NET session storage tutorial and hopefully get to windowing functions. I'm putting that off for a few episodes, just trying to learn how windowing functions work. Ask any question you can think of. Do not consider your question stupid or simple, not worthy of asking. Just type it on in. We'll talk about it. It'll be cool. I have some brownies with me. I may snack on them. I may snack on them earlier than I planned because I just messed up the first nine minutes of the stream. I'm feeling bad about myself. Uh, and watch out for background noise. I got a lot of contractors in the house today. I got kids practicing their instruments. It's kind of a madhouse around here. So I closed the office door. But uh, if you hear power tools or hammering, it's just background. It's just the contractors. I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry. Team Live Coders, you know, hopefully you got the idea from watching the silent version that I'm up on the Live Coders team. If you're looking for a live streamer, check it out. Twitch slash team slash Live Coders. And also the awesome developers streaming list, GitHub slash BNB slash awesome developers streams. Awesome developer streams. If you want to find a developer who's doing live coding about topics interest you, this is a good place to start. Post all my videos to YouTube. You can find that just bit.ly slash GrovesTube. Go check those out. Swag giveaway. So we got some viewers now. Maybe I'll go into the swag giveaway stuff um, since... Uh, I was, I was saying I was going to put this off until a little bit later in the stream just to make sure I get maximum audience here. But I want to give away some swag. I've got a little bit of couch base swag left over from old or from like conferences. Some of it's old swag. Some of it's relatively new. But I, I want to give it away to someone. It's not doing me any good sitting here in my office. So this stuff is pretty good. So I'd like to give it out to you. All you got to do, two things. Follow me on Twitch. And then... Promise me, when I send you some swag, you're going to take a selfie with it and post to Twitter with the hashtag Couchbase. Easy as that, and I'll send you some swag. Just send me your Twitch name and your address. Twitch name so I can keep track of who I sent it to, and your address so I can obviously mail you the swag. And you're going to get some free swag while supplies last. So what have I got here? What have I got? I've got this fine uh, water bottle. It's a... Metal water bottle, aluminum, I assume. Um, BPA free, I guess. Yes, aluminum says right there on the bottom. Aluminum water bottle. These are very nice. Have the Couch Base Developer Community logo on them. I can send you that one. I've also got a selection of various t shirts. Some of them are older designs, some of them are newer. And I have a selection of different sizes. This is a men's large, you can see here. But I've got, I got, uh, I'm not exactly sure what I have, um, but. Uh, I can send you a shirt if you want a shirt. I got a number of different designs on those. I've also got these fine couch base notebooks. This one looks like, I'm looking on the back here, it looks like it's got a little damage from a, a box opener or something, box cutter. So I'm not gonna send you this one, but I've got a few more of these couch base notebooks full of blank sheets of paper for you to write your notes, your drawings, your doodles, your manifesto, whatever you like to write. That's fine. Um, book there. And what else have I got? I got something else I thought. Yes. I've got uh, some stickers and this one is developer community approved. I will include a sticker with any uh, any swag. So uh, all you got to do is contact me. You can find me on Twitter, mgroves. Here's my personal email address. You can send this to me there. Send, just send me this information right here and I'll get you some swag. Uh, just some notes, please one per person. 
Um, you know, I have a limited supply. I want to make sure everyone who wants something gets something. Tell everyone you know that, hey, I can give away free stuff here on Twitch. So come check it out, and they'll get some free swag too. I can't guarantee you a t-shirt size. Uh, I, if Tell me the size you want. I'll see if I have it. If I don't have it, uh, you can have a different size, or I can give you something else. Also, I'm not the Gap. This isn't the Gap, so um, I can't guarantee you that the shirt is going to fit you um, perfectly either. So I'll, I'll do, do my best to accommodate you. Um, but uh, no, no returns. And if you're outside the U.S., I can probably ship it to you, um, assuming it's legal for me to do so, and uh, assuming it doesn't cost me a fortune to do so. Happy to do that. Uh, and I'm doing this on my own, so keep this in mind as well. I'm, I'm footing the bill for the shipping here. A couch base obviously has paid for this old, this old swag uh, initially, but I'm footing the bill for shipping it. I'm doing this all on my own. This is not an official couch base thing. This is totally a live coding with Matt Groves thing. If you're not on Twitter and you can't post that selfie, that's fine. We can still work something out. Maybe you can show it off on your own Twitch stream. Hey, thank you for the follow, Magiatech. Magiatech, thank you for stopping in and checking it out. Uh, if you're not on Twitter, that's fine. We can figure something else out. Maybe, maybe Facebook or maybe you can just uh, talk about it on your own stream or on Twitch or something like that. Uh, yeah, we'll figure something out. But uh, kind, of, kind, of, kind of trying to get something going on Twitter. All right, so you want some swag? That's how you get it. Contact me here, and we'll get it going. All right, TwitchBot is running, is collecting your messages, as you can see there. We're doing that. All right, let's get on with it. Let's get to some meat here. We're actually going to do some coding. So here is my. This is a. This is the tutorial as it is right now. And uh, this is a using Couchbase server for session store. And my the one that I've worked on is actually for ASP.NET. There's also one for Java out there as well. Uh, those are the only two right now. So, oh, there's some of that background noise. Uh, but the idea here is I don't want to overhaul this tutorial. I'm going to put a link uh, to a another uh, sort of mini tutorial that I'm creating. So, um, uh, base 64, most, yeah, so right here, I put a little to-do for myself. I'm going to link to that UDF, which, just, which stands for User Defined Functions, mini tutorial here. So let's go ahead and just um, make sure I have, do I have a session store bucket? Created in Couchbase, ready to go? I think I do. I think I was in there earlier and saw it. Log into my local instance of Couchbase server, which is a database. And there is session store. Yep, there it is. Nothing in it, which is fine. And I'll run the web application here. This is going to just basically demonstrate how ASP.NET, uh, how you can use the Couchbase extensions, ASP.NET uh, session extension. So I'm going to add a shopping cart to the session. Start a new session, shopping cart. This is just randomly generating a shopping cart. I didn't, I didn't want to build a whole shopping cart system on a website. What all I'm trying to demonstrate is just the session part of it. So now I should have three documents here in the session store. And there we go. Excellent. And now back over here, I've got some, some, uh, this, is the, this is the cool thing about Couchbase is that there's lots of tools that you can store a session in and keep it in memory. Uh, one thing you do with Couchbase is you can actually query that data with, with a SQL, with a Couchbase's version of SQL called Nickel. And we can, for instance, get a recent shopping cart. So you can see here's the most recent three shopping carts. This will be the 10 most, but there's, there's three in there right now. And the most common shopping cart items, so tennis shoes has been, there's eight tennis shoes that have been in shopping, that are in shopping carts right now. Um, so if you notice here, uh, well, you can't see it here because it's in base 64. Um, but if we go back here, add a shopping cart, you can see here's tennis shoes and there's four of them. So we're just going to sum up all those instances where uh, tennis shoes is an item and as a, the quantity of them. You can see, okay, tennis shoes, there's 12 of them. Some, my item I called in my fake shopping cart, just plain old boring tennis shoes. 
but uh, it's been purchased 12 times, or simulated purchase 12 times. T-shirt not as popular with two. So this might be, you know, this is kind of a simple uh, example, but a query of what's going on in shopping carts right now, or what's going on in shopping carts in the last, uh, you know, last 12 hours. What's been the most popular item? What's been the least popular item? Things like that. That's something that you, that you can really, uh, you know, when you have a session store, it's great. It helps your users keep session and you know, uh, build their shopping carts and check out. But also be able to query those, and query them in aggregate to see what's going on, what are the trends. That's a really powerful feature as well. So that's what we're going to focus on is sort of these two parts right here, the recent shopping carts and the most common shopping cart items. And the way I do this is if we go over here to, this is a ASP.NET MVC project, home controller here, and I've got, uh, uh, so you can see this is just adding random shopping carts. Here's the possible items. I just hard coded some, some shopping cart items there. And uh, it's just gonna pick them at random. All right, all kinds of stuff there. But what I'm looking at is uh, recent shopping carts and most common shopping cart items. So these are both in the session repo. So we'll go to those methods there. Resharper's thinking. Uh, Resharper. Hello. We're waiting, Resharper. Did we not? Did I do something wrong here? Limitation, declaration. Okay. Uh, that's, that's new. Okay, so, but anyway, here's the repository, session storage repository, and, um, you know, this is, this doesn't actually, this repository doesn't do the work of storing the initial shopping carts in the repository. That's actually done by the extension. But what we're interested in is, is doing some reporting. Calvin, here's how dedicated I am to catching your stream. All right, let me get a little snack here. Be ready for this. You know what? Forget the M&Ms. I'm going to go for the, the brownie. Calvin is at improving. He's on Wi-Fi and managing workshops. That's right. Calvin, this is, Calvin is one of the organizers for the JavaScript and Friends conference, which I will be at tomorrow. I meant to mention that in my little intro, but I forgot. So sorry about that. But I'll be there to, tomorrow as a speaker, and they're doing workshops today. But Calvin is so dedicated to the stream, he is... Checking out this, checking it out while he's at improving. Am I coming tonight? For what? Speaker dinner. I hadn't planned on it. I'm not sure why. The only thing I got going on tonight is I probably need to mow my yard, mow the grass. Is the dinner at improving? people are loving me eating my brownie right into the microphone. It's that improving. Okay. What time does it start, Calvin? Mmm, this is so good. Oh my goodness. Look at these brownies. 6.30. Hmm. I haven't decided yet, Calvin. Did I RSVP? Was there an RSVP? I don't know. Oh man, this brownie. Hmm. I forget if I RSVP'd or not. Oh man. Just tuned in. Thanks for joining me on live brownie eating with Matt Groves. There's one brownie down. Two more to go. <clears throat> I may I may be able to make it, Calvin. I don't think there's anything going on with the family tonight. I do want to mow the grass though. And but I might be able to do that tomorrow. So I don't know, we'll see. Mowing the grass for me is kind of an ordeal. It's, it's uh, multiple hours for this thing. 
thumbs up. I think it should be not thumbs up. It should be bada bing, bada boom. Kidoba bar. Oh man. You know I love me some Kidoba. Can I bring the whole gross family? We will. We will destroy some Kidoba bar. <laughs> okay. So uh, here we are. These are the queries that is actually analyzing the session data. And as I mentioned in the last stream, one of the problems with this query, you didn't order enough in that case. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not going to bring the family to a speaker dinner. Um, anyway, they might want to come up to Eastman, though. Maybe, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, anyway, uh, base 64 is, the, is what's going on here. So if you noticed, back in the database, all this data is being stored in base64 format. And this is, this is a function of just how ASP.NET session storage works. It stores the whole object in base64 format. Fortunately for us, uh, the SQL query language for Couchbase, Nickel, has a base64 decode function. So all I have to do is wrap that in base64 decode, and then we can get stuff out of there, like the date created or the items so on. But this is kind of a pain because every time I access some data I have to wrap a base64 decode in it. And so what I would rather do and what I actually did yesterday if I can find the what is this outline for? Oh, I don't need that. Is uh, and I'll, I have the I'll over here somewhere. Yeah, right here. Created a function called shopping carts which just wraps that base64 decode, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that little function right there. So all I have to do is, instead of querying from, you know, I have to remember the base64 decode every time, I can just use shopping carts. This is a really, really simple example. So here's like the before. This is how it looks after all the base64, and then here's the after, where I'm just querying from shopping carts. So um, I want to do that. Uh, so I'm using base64 decode, and if the, in the Java example, it's not using base64 decode, but I did read it and I noticed that it's using this decode JSON function there. So I'm not going to use that in my example, but I will refer to it here from the, from the tutorial that, hey, you could also use a UDF to get around having to decode JSON every time. So it's a really simple example because there's no parameters here being used. It's just one single simple select, but it's it's probably enough to get you started. Okay, so probably want to come up with a, a little bit of an outline right now. And so we're going to start with, let's see, my ASCII doc syntax here, yeah. Up here at the top, we have this. Uh, using Couchbase server, okay, so we're gonna say using user-defined functions, user, define functions with a session store. And this will be UDF. All right, and then I like to have a little overview. And we'll do this sort of thing. And uh, so kind of, this is kind of gonna be my outline. All right, um, so um, let's see, let me, ref let me refer back to my, I did this yesterday, or did this Tuesday, I keep saying yesterday, Tuesday. I just want to try to keep this consistent with the mini tutorial that I did before for Profile Store. So pages, and it was index. Uh, yes, this tutorial contains five parts. So loading user profile data. Um, so um, say use uh, session store data overview. Uh, we'll call it review. Um, how session data is stored and encoded. Okay, and then um, be uh, executing a, qu 
executing a query, uh, executing a session store query, maybe, something like that. How to query the session store data while it's encoded. Um, creating a helpful user-defined function. How to create a UDF that will make writing queries easier. And then a summary. So I think that's what I'm going to go with here. Okay, so these are going to be our four headings. Mm -hmm. It's got to match exactly for those these links to work. This is these are creating like little uh, links. Why is that in brackets? That's weird. Okay, what did I call summary over here? Quick summary of the tutorial and next steps. Yep, do the same thing. That's weird that it's in brackets though. Okay, summary, all right. All right, so let's just put some notes in here. When using a framework, session data may be stored in an encoded format instead of raw JSON. Uh, for example, ASP.NET, so link back to tutorial, stores it in base64. Uh, ASP.NET and then the Java. It wasn't Java, it was Spring, I believe, right? Spring session, yeah, Spring session. Java Spring, I don't know if it's the right name called Java Spring stores it as uh, JSON encoded. Stores it as JSON encoded. Um, um, or is it, it's, it's kind of weird because it's JSON within JSON, so I don't want to get too confusing here. I just maybe leave it as that. Java Spring stores it in another encoding. I don't know. And we'll get a link back to the tutorial. Tutorial. Okay, and uh, okay, I probably want a. Uh, JSON example, snippet right here. Um, this uh, this works fine for the session store. This works fine for session store, but what if we want to execute queries against this data to gather insights? And answer questions. All right, so then uh, in the tutorial, link back to tutorial. In the ASP.NET tutorial, um, we created a query to find the 10 most recent shopping carts in. Uh, in uh, where it's being stored as session data. So this will be the query here. Um, results look like this. Results here. Um, base 64 decode needs to be used because um, used to, needs to be used uh, in order to in order to query individual pieces individual properties of data stored in the session. 
Um, this is a little bit annoying. I'm gonna probably gonna change the wording of that. A little bit annoying um, because it requires some extra ceremony and there's a there's a risk that um, I want to say your team yourself or your team a risk there's a risk of forgetting to decode I don't know it needs to be reworded okay uh, so in this tutorial we'll create a UDF to um, make our queries to I don't know make our queries look cleaner can't spell queries maybe read cleaner and make it make it uh, less less likely that we'll forget to decode okay um, to create a function uh, so we're going to be doing this right here go ahead and put that in a source block use create function function name language inline as like that okay um, nope. okay and uh, let's see how do we go about explaining this so um, um, you can put any valid nickel inside of the function this is I don't know uh, if that's true or not there's not enough documentation on uh, create function available to me yet but uh, I'm just going to make the assumption you can put any valid nickel inside of the function let's put uh, the base 64 decoding inside of a function called shopping carts okay and then there and then the, uh, af after this anytime we want to query shopping carts oh, this should be should be up here this is our nickel query So I'm going to query shopping carts. We can use this function instead of querying the data directly. Uh, and so the after is going to be like this. Uh, now the encoding is being handled by the shopping carts function. The results remain, the, the, the query is simpler and easier to read and modify, while the results stay the same. And we'll have the results again. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but we'll show the results here. Okay, summary. Uh, UDF made writing queries easier. Uh, UDF can hide implementation details. I don't know if hide implementation can encapsulate, maybe? I don't know if that's quite the right word, because we're not really an object-oriented world here, but uh, it's kind of like encapsulate. I mean, it's, it's a function, right? So I don't know if that's the right word. Okay, and uh, let's see, uh, let's go back. So, return to the main tutorial. This is what I did last time. So, .NET and the Java version. Uh, this tutorial, 
tutorial showed how to improve the query uh, specifically for ASP.NET, but you can apply the same principles to the Java version, which uses, it's using something called, uh, where is it? Decode JSON. Decode JSON to accomplish, to uh, uses decode JSON to in similar in similar fashion. How's that? Okay. Uh, I don't know if we need to show how to select functions uh, or to drop functions for this tutorial. Um, I would like to link the documentation. We don't have that documentation available just yet, so uh, can't do that. But uh, I'll also say uh, link to forums. Go to the Nickel forums again. And I would say link to documentation, but I don't know where that's going to be yet, so I'll leave that out. All right, so that is what I call a rough draft of the whole thing. It's a lot of um, incomplete sentences and badly worded phrases and some placeholders. Uh, I'll probably throw an image or two in there somewhere because images are good for when you're reading the web. But you can't see on the, this is my just raw text, but over here it kind of looks, you know, somewhat presentable as, as, a, as a structure. That's where I'm at. It's brownie time. Number two brownie. These brownies were just baked today, so it's still a little bit warm which makes the frosting on them nice and melty. You know, I always, <clears throat> sorry, I always grew up with uh, brownies my mom made, they were always frosted. And it wasn't until later that I realized not everyone frosts brownies or not everyone likes frosted brownies. Um, but I do. I still do. Yes, frosted brownies. <clears throat> you must be in the other camp, Calvin. <clears throat> you, you think they should not be frosted? You think they should be frosted? Well, you've just never had one that's frosted. Really? Never had a frosted brownie? We're well, missing out. You are missing out. Maybe I'll bring you one. If I show up there tonight, I'll bring you a frosted brownie. These are homemade. I would likely gobble it down quite vigorously. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Mm mm mm. That's a good old brownie. Let me check things out here on Twitter. Uh, so Calvin, I noticed your your tweet here. Um, so I I linked to that uh, compare net objects, and then down there later in the thread, you linked to compare net objects. A little confused about that. Maybe you didn't see my my original tweet. But uh, that's, I mean, that's that's cool. That person uh, will likely now check out that library because it's been recommended by two people. Although I've never used the darn thing. I just, I know Greg Finzer. Uh, and I know Keller Kellerman Software. So I know I've seen that compared, that library. I've seen him talking about it before. Hmm, I'm on my third brownie now. I probably should save it. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So let's start to flesh this thing out a little better. So, overview. I probably need a little spiel here. What did I write in the uh, other one? 
Yep, uh, tutorial is part of the main user profile tutorial. So I'll probably do something similar here. Part of the main session story tutorial, both .NET and C Sharp. So let's go over there and get those URLs. Docs.couchbase, tutorials, session, mm, session storage, ASP.NET. I called it ASP.NET, which makes sense because it is ASP.NET specific. And what did Dennis call the Java one? He called it Java. Session storage Java. Even though it's spring specific, he still called it Java. Or maybe I call it Java. I don't know. Either way, it's fine. Okay, this tutorial is part of the main session store tutorial, both .NET and Java. You should be able to follow along if you haven't gotten through the tutorials yet. But reading those tutorials first will give you more context. All right, so first up, session stored data review. How session data is stored and encoded um, in Couchbase uh, by web frameworks like ASP.NET. Let's do that. Okay, and executing a session store query. How to query the session store data while it's encoded. All right, creating a helpful, should be uh, capital H there, this is a heading. Change this down here. How to create a UDF that will make writing queries easier. Okay, uh, summary, a quick summary of the tutorial and next steps. Um, I don't have a period on these, so we'll take a period off that. Session store data, this should also be capital letters. All right, when using a web framework like ASP.NET or Spring, session data may be stored in an encoded format instead of raw JSON. Okay, uh, for example, ASP.NET Core, uh, as shown, in the ASP.NET session store tutorial, which I will again link to right here. Well, this should be ASP.NET, not .NET. Uh, as shown in the ASP.NET session storage tutorial, stores session data as base 64. Uh, I should not store is Couchbase as a storing, but it encodes session data as base 64. So an example of it, and I might have an example of it in here already. Do I? Yes, I do. How session data is stored. Yep, so we'll just copy this from there. Uh, and um, let's make this a note. Java sp or Spring stores it, uh, it encodes session data differently. Um, see for Java Spring. And we'll link back to that. And that link is right here. Beautiful. Uh, okay. The rest of this tutorial assumes ASP.NET. I probably need to be more consistent about ASP.NET versus ASP.NET Core, but I think it's probably the same between both of them. Um, this tutorial assumes ASP.NET, but uh, the same principles can be applied to Java Spring. All right. This approach works. Works. I don't know if fine is the right word. Uh, works fine. Uh, this approach. 
approach is adequate for the session store mechanism itself. I don't know if the mechanism is necessary in there. This approach is adequate for the session store itself, uh, but uh, it makes it, uh, um, but makes it more difficult to explore the data on its own. Uh, if we want to execute SQL queries against this data to gather insights and answer questions, we must decode the data uh, in the query itself. All right, which transitions into this next session, executing session store query. In the ASP.NET uh, tutorial, session storage tutorial, which I will also again link back to here. Don't be stingy on the links. That's always my, uh, my writing style anyway. Uh, here we go. ASP.NET session storage tutorial. Uh, again with the we. I like to avoid the I and the we when I'm writing tutorials. I save that for blog posts. Uh, I occasionally, occasionally do it anyway. Uh, I guess you, you, we, it's like a second person sort of voice. It's probably fine. I'm probably overthinking it. Um, you know, it's not like I'm running a research paper or something. Uh, okay, just say there was, there is a query to find the 10 most recent shopping carts being stored as session data. And so this is the query here, which I paste it in. We'll make this a uh, um, format for ASCII doc. Okay, and the results look like this. So I'm gonna go simulate some results here. Which means I got to put a bunch of stuff in the shopping cart, at least. Oh, oh, what happened? Oh boy. Was it trying to, yeah, it could be a bug in my little ASP.NET app, which would not be surprising. Some sort of race condition or something. I don't need, I don't need to have every single, I'm not gonna actually show all 10 results so, um, nope, that's not what I want. I want this one here. Not that it matters, this should be the same. Or are they? Oh, something different there. Array count, date created, session store ID is not coming in. Oh, that's my mistake. Because it should be session store ID. Uh, session store ID. Yeah, it might actually be me a... Okay, so I've made a mistake in my function. All right, that's no problem. Glad I caught this. So this is the code being run, but it also needs to return meta s ID. Oh, it doesn't like it. Syntax error dash, a comma, hmm. Oh, because it's, mm, because it's value here, isn't it? Oh, man. Now oh, that's no good. And uh, this was supposed to be, what do I call this? Session store ID, uh, session store ID. Okay, fine, but I want these to actually be the, at the, uh, at the base level. I don't want it to be in their own little deal there. Yeah, that didn't work last time either. Not sure why I thought it worked this time. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
I mean, I could just do it like this. Take created. Yeah, but uh, that seems wasteful. When the object is right here. I just want to pull this up one level. Hmm. Shopping carts. Because value, well, what about raw? Nope. See, raw is only supposed to return. It won't, it won't return like, it's supposed to return the actual values in the array. All right, so if I take this off of here, that should, see, that works. That puts it up to the level doesn't wrap it, but I need to include the ID with that too. Hmm. Well, let's go over the documentation here. We're looking at uh, nickel language reference. And I was just doing this yesterday, and I thought I had figured this out, but uh, aggregate function is not what I want. JSON functions. Maybe that's what I want. JSON functions. Uh, I don't think so. This is what the string or the spring stuff is using. Object functions. Token functions? No. Type functions. To array. Oh, maybe this is what I want. Is there a to object? To object. To object. Well, I think it already is an object. No, what's what does two object do? Returns object is following. Objects are themselves. Okay, that's not really what I want. Object unwrap. Unwrap an object without knowing the name and name value score. See, I could have sworn this is exactly what I wanted. Hmm. This is more complicated than it needs to be, I think. So I think I'm missing something. This is basically what I want, except I don't want this wrapping in here. I don't need that. But I could, I could see why that might be necessary, because there could be, hypothetically, there could be an ID field in here. And then what do you do when you have an ID field here and an ID field here when they uh, collide? So there's some sort of uh, hmm, object can cat. Maybe that's what I want, object can cat. I don't know. Object can cat. Nope. Object inner pairs. <laughs> object names. So I like what's what's object put. Object put. Object put object, okay, attribute key. Right, uh, what, do, what do they call it? What do they call it? Uh, uh, session store ID. Something like that. Let's see what happens. Okay, and then I can just say value of that, right? All right, well, that, that works. Let's go with that. 
It may not be optimal, but it works, and it's a good place as any to start. My fear is I have to explain object put value as well as base64 code, but I can do that. I can link to value, link to object put docs. I might want to just link to base64 decode docs too. Yeah, may as well. Okay, back up here. So I want to get the results. What's the main thing I was doing here? To include in the... Um, yeah, so we'll just take a few of these. Include in the tutorial. Source. Uh, this is going to be JavaScript. I don't know if JSON is valid for ASCII doc. And uh, we'll put a little etc. on here. Okay. Base64 decode uh, needs to be used in order to query individual properties of the encoded session session data. So this is the sentence I know I wanted to rewrite. This is a little bit annoying because it requires some extra ceremony. There's risk of forgetting to decode. Uh, So basically, I want to think about this from a maintenance point of view, right? Because we know that code changes. And if we go back to this and I say, oh, I want to add another field to this query. Well, what if, if, I, if I just say like uh, s dot, I mean, it'd probably be hard to do because everything is base64 encoded. But if I just said s dot shopping cart dot foo as foo, then the risk there is that's that's going to you know, that's going to fail. It's not going to make any sense. So we have to then wrap it in base64 decoding. Um, f I guess maybe f for a for a complex query, this involves a uh, a lot of repetition and extra ceremony. That's probably good enough. People understand sort of why. Those are not good things. This tutorial this is will create, let's create. Um, uh, to, uh, to address this, a, this, this is passive voice, a UDF can be created by zombies to make our queries read cleaner and make it less likely we'll forget to decode. So what's a better way to phrase that without passive voice? A UDF is one way to make these queries, these type of queries, read both uh, to Read cleaner and cleaner and use less repetition. A UDF is one way. Let's just say user defined function. I'll put UDF in parentheses. Is one way to make these types of queries read cleaner and use rest repet and use less repetition. Rest repetition. Okay, creating a helpful user-defined function. To create functions, to create user-defined functions, use create function, function name, language in line, as so uh, inside of the function, um, uh, let's see, how do, we, how do we find this? I'll describe this. So inside of a function, there's some there's some nickel. There's some SQL code in there. Um, inside the function, put the nickel query. Um, the nickel query goes inside of the function.
what was that? Uh, for session storage to better enable session storage queries, let's put the base64 decode inside of a function called shopping carts. All right, and here's the example. Uh huh. Okay. Um, the goal of this function is to return uh, pre-decoded shopping cart data from the session store bucket. Um, both value and object put are necessary um, in order to return a shopping cart, a, a cohesive, complete, complete shopping cart document. Okay, and then I'll put links to to learn more about these pieces of nickel, these, these, uh, more information about these keywords. Let's do a bulleted list. The web loves bulleted lists. People love bulleted lists. They can scan them. Scan them, skip them, so on. All right, so now let's go ahead and find uh, these documents. So we have object put, I'll link to that. And I like to, so this, this has a version number, but I like to make them a little more evergreen. So I'm gonna put current in there instead of 6.0. That way if it'll, it'll link to 6.5 documentation when that comes out, so. Object put. is needed to combine the document key with the document value. Okay, um, so where, what about the value keyword? That's gonna probably be in select, right? Hmm. Raw element and oh, that's interesting. Actually, call that straight out. Jeff Blankenberg, hey, how are you, sir? Thanks for dropping in, checking out the live stream. Good to hear from you. Uh, so, raw element value. I want to link to that, but it doesn't seem like I can link to it directly. Just writing a little bit of tutorial content here today. Some new features coming out in Couchbase 6.5, and one of my jobs is to update a few tutorials to take advantage of some of the new features coming down the road. So that's what I'm doing. Just, just doing some writing today, a little bit of coding. What are you up to? Arguments? Is it an argument? Okay, well, so I put a link to that. Writing code to test my code. Checks out. How else would you do it? <laughs> uh, value will unwrap the document created by base 64 decode. Well, it's not a document, it's a uh, object. So let's put this in order, makes more sense. 64 decode. That is, where is that? Miscellaneous utility functions. Meta fun. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, B64 decode. Does the decoding work? Uh, decodes the object as uh, decodes the session store object. That's probably good enough. 
Okay, so more information about these keywords, Base64 Decode decodes the session store object. Value will unwrap the object created by Base64 Decode. Object put is needed to combine the document key with the document value. Okay. After this function, function has been created, anytime a shopping cart, anytime a query involves shopping carts, uh, after this function has been created, use it, uh, query it, uh, let's see how I put this, query the function, querying the function instead of querying the raw data allows uh, results in a um, query with less repetition. For example, the above query can be refactored into colon this. Okay, so let me go ahead and first just make sure everything's working here. I'm going to drop function shopping carts and recreate it like this. Good. And then over here, I'm going to make sure this new one works how I'd expect it to. And it does. Oh, it does not. Uh, this needs to be that. Okay, good. Um, where'd my visuals to? There it is. Okay, and we'll put this inside of an ASCII doc block. Now the encoding is being handled by a shopping cart's function. The query is, uh, this is kind of what I already just said. The query is simpler and easier to read and modify while the results stay the same, which I can just copy and paste this results from up here because they literally are the same, All right? 10, yep, exactly the same. All right. A user defined function uh, made our queries easier to read and write. The UDF can encapsulate implementation details and reduce repetition. I feel like I've repeated that sentence a lot. Ironic. Reduce repetition, reduce repetition, reduce repetition. Uh, this tutorial showed how to uh, specifically, showed sp how to specifically improve the query for finding recent shopping carts stored in a session uh, by ASP.NET. But you can apply the same principles to the Java slash Spring tutorial as well. It uses decode JSON in a similar fashion. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, go back over here. Just kind of look how I worded it. Last one seemed pretty good. This is the one I did Monday. Um, for wait for your store return to the parent. Yeah, that's the last thing I want to do. Return to the parent session storage tutorial. And it'll be these two links right here. SPNet Java. Alrighty. Um, what else? Yep. Uh, 
fine, fine, fine. This is all just junk. Uh, link to the forums. So if you're still struggling with indexing, I always get help from humans. If um, if you're um, if you're wondering if you have, I guess, if you have more questions, if you have more questions about UDFs, you can always get help from humans on the nickel category in the couch. Uh, on the nickel category on the Couchbase forums. I'll say in the nickel category on the Couchbase forums. What else did I link to up here? Complete overview of indexing. Man, all these folks getting their MVP emails today makes me sad. Is today uh, MVP day? Oh, you know, they do it every month, Calvin. That's I think they've, they've done that. They switched that in the last few years. So I'm not going to ignore you. Um, yeah, it's every month. So, uh, these people have probably been in the MVP process for multiple months now. Um, it used to be they give out MVPs once a quarter or like twice a year or something like that, but now I think it's every month. So, uh, don't get discouraged. Unless I sent you an email that says you are not getting an MVP, don't get discouraged. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, if you have questions about UDS. So at this point, I like to put in a link to the documentation. Link to UDF documentation. But I don't have a link to the UDF documentation because as far as I know, it's not available yet. It's not public. 6.5 has not been released. So there's no link to the documentation. I don't even know if there's a link to like the specs anywhere, like I've, I've done before with 6.5 features, a link to somewhere on GitHub where the specs are. I don't even know what that is. So come back later, add the link here. Okay. All right, well, that is my first draft. So I went from rough draft to first draft, so now it's time for brownie. Let's finish off this brownie here. Myself a little treat. Mmm, they've cooled down, but they're still really good. Man, got a phone call. Hmm. Well, anybody uh, following along, how's this tutorial looking? I know it's kind of, uh, you know, kind of dropped in the middle of it because this is a, a brand, like a offshoot of a larger tutorial. Am I missing anything, do you think? Maybe some screenshots? Not really much to screenshot. It's all, it's all just SQL and JSON. I could do screenshots of SQL and JSON, but you can't copy and paste from those. Brownie gone. So good. Ow. What is going on with my phone? For some reason, when I get a voicemail these days, it like sends me like four notifications on my phone. Okay. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to commit. This will not put it into production, but uh, just, uh, oh, you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to link from the main tutorials. I've linked back to them, but I need to link to this one. So I won't commit that just yet, but I'll add this. So uh, this is a uh, UDF tutorial for session storage. Um, What else I need to do that I forgot to do is uh, this is a 6.5 plus feature. I need to mention that this is only for Couchbase Service 6.5. I probably should do that over here as well. I mentioned 6.5. Yep. 
six dot five. Okay. So let's see. Um, tutorial. That's not how you spell tutorial. I think put that note here at the end here. All right. Notes. Uh, user defined functions. EFs are available in Couchbase server 6.5 and newer. Well, mm, so I don't, I'm not 100% sure if those are going to be a developer preview feature or a fully supported feature. So it might be more accurate to say user defined functions are not available in Couchbase server 6.5. Zero and newer. Because um, there could be a 6.1 release or something. Well, let's just let's go with that. They are available in Couchbase 6.5 and newer. That's probably good enough. Only available in Couchbase 6.5 and newer. Okay. So now what I like to do, and I've kind of done this already, is I like to read it out loud to myself. Uh, I do this when I'm sitting at home in front, when there's no camera on, I do this anyway. I do read it out loud so I can kind of get a feel for how it reads and maybe some things that sound awkward that I can rewrite. So I'm just going to basically read what's on the screen and, and make changes as I go along. All right, overview, or user, using, anybody else still in here? I'm in a mood. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're in, you're in a bad mood, Calvin? Or are you in a mood to, like, uh, give people some... Uh, you're in the mood to give people some subscriptions? Because <laughs> you have done way more. You've gone above and beyond with the gift subscriptions. And I very much appreciate it. And I do not expect you to keep doing that. Um, but, uh, but Jeff Blankenberg was in here just a few moments ago. He might be just sort of lurking. Um, but, uh, yeah, although Jeff, I think Jeff's an Amazon employee, right? So he probably gets like free Twitch subs to everybody. That's how it works, right? <laughs> and he gets, uh, free, uh, stuff from Amazon all the time. All of his orders are free from Amazon because he's an employee. Pretty sure that's how it works, right? <laughs> all right. So I'm just going to start reading here. Yeah. He got that hook up. Using user-defined functions with a session store. Overview. This tutorial is part of the main session store tutorial, both ASP.NET and Java. You should be able to follow along if you haven't gone through those tutorials yet, but reading those tutorials first will give you more context. Session store data review. How session data is stored and encoded by web frameworks like ASP.NET. Executing a session store query. How to query the session store data while it's encoded. Um, do I need to say the while it's encoded? I can omit that. Uh, creating a helpful user-defined function. Uh, I mean, helpful is kind of implied, right? Let's just take the helpful off of there. Why would I create if it wasn't helpful? Creating a user-defined function, that actually inhibits you. <laughs> okay. Uh, creating a user-defined function. How to create a UDF that will make the make writing queries writing queries easier. That will make writing queries easier. Writing queries easier. Um, how to create a UDF that will make writing queries easier. Okay, let's go with that. Summary, a quick summary of this tutorial and next steps. Note, user-defined functions, UDFs are only available in Couchbase Server 6.5 and newer. Session store data review. Oh, this part doesn't need to be in there. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, when using a web framework like ASP.NET or Spring, session data may be stored in an encoded format instead of raw JSON. For example, ASP.NET Core, as shown in the ASP.NET session store tutorial, you know, I don't say core anywhere else, let's just take that out here, encodes session data as base64. Do I need to say base64 in all caps? That's what the function is, as base64. So what do you think, Calvin? Base64 of the space or of no space? What's the proper way to write Base64? Checking out my Twitter. 
All right. How's Wikipedia right? Base 64. Base 64. No spaces, capital B. Okay. Let's go with that. Uh, here's an example. This is a document key, shopping cart, blah, 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 et cetera. User, okay. Note, spring encodes session data different. Different? Differently. C, using Couchbase Server as a session store tutorial for Java Spring. The rest of this tutorial assumes ASP.NET. Um, assumes, I guess it assumes Base64. It doesn't assume ASP.NET per se. But the same principle can be applied to other encoding methods. Uh, decoding slash encoding methods. Okay. This approach is adequate for the session store itself, but it makes it more difficult to explore the, I don't know if adequate's the right word. This approach makes it, um, makes it more difficult, more difficult than what? Makes it difficult to explore the data on its own. Uh, If we want to execute SQL queries against this data to gather insights and answer questions, we must decode the data in the query itself, in the SQL query itself. Executing a session store query. In the ASP.NET session storage tutorial, there's a query to find the 10 most recent shopping carts being stored as session data. There's the query. Results look like this. Results of this query look like this. Base64 decode, let's put that in, whoops, let's put that in little back ticks for, because that's a function name. Base64 decode needs to be used in order to query individual properties of the encoded session data. For a complex query, this involves a lot of repetition and extra ceremony. Um, do I need an extra ceremony? I'll just go with that. Creating a, uh, this can be mitigated. We're going to do a transition here. This can be mitigated by creating a, oh wait, no, that already says that. I'm just repeating myself. Okay, user-defined function is one way to make these type of queries read cleaner and user repetition. I think I'd like to rephrase this. Um, I want to use active voice though. A user-defined function can mitigate this repetition. Okay, creating a user-defined function. To create user-defined functions, you use create function, function name, language, inline, as parentheses. A nickel query goes inside of the function. To better, well, we can say nickel, nickel goes inside the function. Um, to, I mean, nickel goes inside the function. The function can contain whatever nickel you like. To better enable, mm, is that good? The function can contain whatever nickel you'd like. To better enable session storage queries, thank you for the, f oh, hey. Shocksney, Shocksney man, Shocksney man. If I'm saying that right, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you stopping in, checking it out. We're working on some tutorials stuff today. It involves a little bit of coding, a little bit of SQL writing, and a little and a lot of just regular English writing. Um, this is a lot of a lot of my job is creating content like this. So I'm just reading through it right now to kind of do my final draft, um, change things. Uh, and, and tweak the language and things. So if you have suggestions, drop them in the chat there. Or if you have any questions of any kind whatsoever about uh, SQL databases and what have you, feel free to drop those messages in the chat. Happy to go on tangents. All right. Uh, okay, so there's the, let's put the base64 decode inside of a function called shopping carts. Create function, blah, 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 blah. The goal of this function is to return, 
uh, return pre-decoded shopping cart data from the session store bucket. Both the value and object put are necessary. Let's uh, put those in code formatting. In order to return a complete shopping cart document, more information about these keywords, basics for decode. Uh, value will uh, basics for decode decodes the session store object. Uh, value will unwrap the object created by base64 decode. Object put is needed to combine the document key with the document value. After uh, this function has been created, querying the function instead of querying the raw data results in a query with less repetition. For example, the above query can be refactored into so. Now the encoding is being handled by the shopping carts function, and that should probably be in code highlighting as well. The query, ooh, this needs to be a capitalized. The query is simpler and easier to read and modify while the results stay the same. Okay, there's the results. Summary, a user-defined function UDF made our queries easier to read and write. A UDF can encapsulate implementation details and reduce repetition. This tutorial showed how to specifically improve the query for finding recent shopping carts stored in session by ASP.NET, but you can apply the same principles to the Java Spring tutorial as well. It uses decode JSON in a similar fashion. Also code formatting. If you have more questions about UDFs, you can always get help from humans in the nickel category on the Couchbase forums. Return to the parent session storage tutorial ASP.NET or Java. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Okay, now let's drop in a link, whoops, to the main tutorial page. Uh, notes. Um, if you are using Couchbase Server 6.5 plus, you can, you can create a user defined function. Wait, is this where I want it to go? Yeah, I think I'd rather put it up here. If you're using Cosmos Server 6.5, you can create a user defined function to uh, simplify this query and avoid repetition, which is about the 10th time I've repeated the sentence or the phrase avoid repetition. Uh, so I want to link to that. And the link to that's going to be what? It's going to be this URL here slash UDF. And link, create a user defined function. And session storage slash udf.html. If you're using Couchbase Service 6.5 plus, you can create a user defined function to simplify this query and avoid repetition. Yep, I like that. I can use that with Java too. Uh, if you're using Couchbase Service 6.5, you can create a user defined function to simplify this query uh, and avoid repetition. Although there's not as much repetition in his example, the Java one. Um, simplify this query and avoid repetition. And avoid the need to use decode JSON in every query. That's probably fair enough. If you're using Couchbase 6.5 plus, you can create a user defined function, simplify this query, and avoid the need to use decode JSON in every query. Yeah, it's just another way of phrasing less repetition. Maybe I want to change this one. Uh, uh, and what did I say? And avoid the need to use JSON. Okay, so I'm going to say avoid the need to use base 64 decode multiple times in every query. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. Because if it's me, and I'm coming in looking at this tutorial, I'm seeing, uh, oh, geez, I'm using base64 here, here, and here, three different places for a simple query. That's kind of annoying. 
Well, here it says, oh, I can avoid the need to use that multiple times to query if I'm using Calibrate Service 6.5. Okay, that's a pretty good call to action. Pretty good side note. I'm happy with that. Time to commit. Let's do a quick compare, quick diff. What is that? Uh huh. Why did I split that up? No, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, what else? Yep, just one little note. Good. And then the changes I made to here based on the read through. Differently. Yep. A little typos, spelling, rephrasing, all that kind of good stuff. That all looks good. Okay. We're going to commit that. Uh, final draft of UDF mini tutorial with links from parent tutorials. Okay, I like it. I like it. I'm going to think about this because I want to do something similar to what I did on Tuesday with a pull request and get someone from the docs team to review this before I merge it in. I could just force it out there myself, but I want to get the, I would like to get some feedback from the docs team. Uh, and there's no particular rush getting this published. So I probably screwed up with the get with the git stuff here because I've got two commits now that are on this master branch. Hmm. So let's just, uh, I don't know. We could um, push this out to my GitHub. I think that's M Groves, right? Yeah. Just push it out to GitHub. That should be fine. Then maybe I can, I don't know, can I pick a couple? I don't know how this, if this will work or not. I'm gross. Maybe, maybe Calvin will know. Maybe Calvin, this would be a problem that Git Kraken could solve. Um, but uh, what I've got here is I've got a, uh, where's my repo? Tutorials contrib. And I just had two commits. These two right here, I want to submit these as a pull request to the project I'm forking from. So how can I do that? New pull request. Um, you're getting it. Uh, what does that mean, you're getting it? I, I don't want to include this commit because I've already submitted a pull request for that. I just want these two. So anybody can exclude that? <laughs> I mean, I should have gone about this differently. I should have created a feature branch. This would have been a lot easier. That, I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Let me think about this. I need my thinking candies. Caramel M&M's. I'm going to chew on that a little bit. Way too many sweets today. Hmm. Can I? I was just going to say that same thing, Calvin. Create a new branch. Locally, cherry pick, was commits, and then do a PR for that branch. Mm -hmm. So I'll create a branch and I'll call this one, I don't know, session store UDF. Mm -hmm. 
And we'll switch over to that branch now. Um, cherry picking is not something I've done much. This might be... I might be doing this wrong. You may want to branch from a commit further back in recent ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yes, it does. It makes sense. So, uh, how do I get rid of this branch? <laughs> Go back to master. Fine. This may be where I need to drop down to the command line. Sometimes I have to do that. Alright, uh, we're going to do a command line here. Where is it? Get bash here. Get branch. How do we delete? Get branch dash... Oh. Okay, yeah. Uh, get branch dash delete, right? And it is, what do I call it? Session store UDF. Well, I just skip the list of the branches, right? Yeah. Dash D. Session store UDF. Okay, delete the branch. All right, so now let's just see the log here and let's go back to this one. So yeah, origin master, uh, create branch at this version. Mm -hmm. I'll call this session store UDF. All right, and then I will um, switch to that branch. Session store UDF. Okay, good. Now, the cherry picking part. Uh, there's, it's, that looks like it's not being called cherry pick here. In the UI. Oh. Rebase dash changes. Hmm. Do the log view. Log view, log view. Yeah, okay. So here's where I am. And what I want is... Oh, it's not here. Uh... Yeah. This is where I am. And what I want to pick is from a, from a future commit. Um, master? Okay. I want, to, I want to bring in this one and this one. Ah, cherry pick. There we go. And that brings us over here. Uh, we're gonna put, uh, cherry pick. Is this going to put them... Pick all. I think that's going to work. Let's try it. Okay. So if I do like a, a commit here, oh, wait, oh, it looks like I already committed them, I guess. Show log. Yes, this looks right. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Added and then modified. Okay, great. And then I can push. I'm going to push to the same branch on my own GitHub. See if this will work. Push that branch and then do the PR. Yep, so we're pushing the branch. And switch over here. Um, recently pushed branch, session store UDF. And uh, so I'm going to do pull request. I want to pull request into Couchbase Labs. Is that what this is going to do? Yes. Okay. Great. Two commits. Okay. Boom. Excellent. This is one of the great things about Git. I mean, it's a little bit, you know, I had to drop down the command line, had to fiddle with different things, but this kind of operation, I feel like if this is even possible in Subversion, it would be, um, it would be a whole thing. <laughs> so this is one of the good things about, about Git is that every commit is a branch. And so you can sort of grab other commits and move them around. Tortoise Git doesn't have a good local branch listing. Uh, what do you mean by that? Most other UIs have a tree view. Um, 
Hmm. You may have a good point there. That may be something that uh, I'm assuming Git Kraken does quite well. Uh, there's a repo browser like this. Uh, I don't want to mess around with this too much because I'm right in the middle of something, but uh, all right, uh, added UDF tutorial to session store. Git Kraken is nice, source tree has it, probably others. All right, uh, so we're gonna put a little note here. This is a mini tutorial on how to use UDF with the existing session store tutorials. Um, this tutorial is designed to promote, promote not the right word, highlight, highlights a new feature in 6.5. I say 6.5, I probably should use the code word, right? Mad Hatter. So I'm gonna create this pull request. And I wanna review. I wanna review from James Nocentini, which by the way, he uh, contacted me um, after Tuesday, because like I said, he's in a different time zone. So he's probably uh, gone from work right now. But he said, yes, he will be happy to review it. It might be like a week. He's, he's kind of backed up, uh, which is not surprising because um, the docs team does a lot of, a lot of work. Um, but uh, that's fine. That works for me. I, I value his review on that. And this is going on the doc site, so this is important. So I'll create that pull request. Send it off there. And there it is. Requested a review. Hi, James. I'll just look a little note. This is basically the same deal as, uh, what was the other pull request? Uh, number eight. Request number eight. Please review when you get a chance. This is signed. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is an update meant for the 6.5 beta release. Give a little comment there. And good. There we go. Yep. So there we go. We're done. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. I'm going to basically do some internal promotion on this one. Um, finished a draft of UDF content for 6.5. Waiting review from James Nocentini and a link to it. There we go. Excellente. All right. So we knocked that out. Well, let's just take stock of what I've done today so far. I uh, don't need to do that. Okay. Back here to intro. All right. So this is done. It's done in the sense that it's kind of out of my hands right now. I'm waiting for a review. And I may need to do some more tweaking based on that review. And um, then I assume James will do the merge, but I could do the merge too. Either way, I get merge, and then we'll wait for it to show up on the actual doc site, docs.couchbase.com, at which point I can tweet about it, maybe write a blog post about it. Blog post about it might be better after the actual release, but we'll figure that out. Okay. So we got one item knocked off our list today. I'm going to take a quick second here, and uh, any questions you have, drop them in the old chat box. You need to do a stream where you demo the whole ASCII doc setup slash usage. Well, I kind of did this a little bit on Tuesday, kind of showed a little bit what, what was going on, how it's different than Markdown, similar but different, still don't quite understand it. The, the thing is, I am writing an ASCII doc, and the docs team is using ASCII doc as well. Um, for the, oh yeah, you weren't here. You weren't here on Tuesday. Uh, the docs team is using something called, what are they using? It's something, it's using ASCII doc for the everything, right? Everything's an ASCII doc. 
but they've got a whole system and they worked with uh, Dan Allen who's the creator of ASCII Doctor um, they got a whole system to compile all these ASCII docs together and uh, in you know put them into a website like this whereas I'm kind of like a I'm kind of like a uh, what do you call it, a dilettante in this world I know ASCII doc I love ASCII doc but they've got a whole other layer on top of that and I can't remember what it's called I want to say it starts with an M um, but it's like build scripts and all the, all the stuff they need to put together the whole doc site it's really really cool stuff um, and that's how they're able to pull together files from different repos and all that kind of stuff. So I'm far from an expert on that. But the ASCII doc stuff, I've been writing and using ASCII doc for years, compiling it to HTML, compiling it to PDFs, that kind of stuff. I love I love me some ASCII doc. But um, yeah, we could, we could we could definitely devote a whole stream to that at some point. Uh, actually, in fact, uh, this was a, a session I submitted to conferences last year about my writing process, the tooling I used, uh, the kind of stuff I sort of talked through today. Uh, but no one really, uh, no one picked it up. No one really wanted that session. Um, so, well, whatever. It's fine. Uh, can't, can't win them all. Uh, all right, so, uh, I just want to check to see. I was checking to see. So, if, if you have questions, you're hanging out in the chat room, now would be a good time to ask him. I wanted to look at my calendar to see what kind of time I had scheduled for this stream today. It looks like I'm coming towards the end here. It's almost 3.30. I started at 1.30. So I'm probably going to wrap things up. Once again, not getting to windowing functions. Poor windowing functions. So we'll get to that next time on the stream. I may do some research on my own between now and then. But uh, look at, I'll plan on, on looking at window functions next time. Window function is it's like over and lag and stuff like that that you see every once in a while in SQL but uh, it's not something that I've done a lot with so I wanted to do some research on that. Okay. Well I want to say thank you to everybody who stopped in today. We're going to go and find a uh, another channel to raid but I want to Give a quick shout out to, uh, let's see, uh, Punk Muppet. Started following a couple days ago, so thank you, Punk Muppet, for the follow. Uh, Calvin, row numbers, all the things. Yeah, row number is not something that Couchbase has yet. Uh, I think it's coming. Um, but but it would be weird to call it row number, because it's not like it's rows in a, in a, in a table. But the, the concept is still useful. Uh, Magiatech. Magiatech, thank you for the follow, Magiatech. And Shock Snyman, thank you for the follow. Thank you, Calvin, for hanging out with me as always. And thank you, Jeff Blankenberg, for stopping in, saying hi. Appreciate it. All right, who shall we raid? Let's see. I've, I always raid Michael Jolly, so I want to try to find someone else here. I've raided InstaFluff before. It's a really cool channel. Looks like he's doing some crazy stuff with... Photoshop or paint or something? What is going on there? <laughs> All right. Uh, what else? Honest Dan Games. What's Honest Dan Games working on? An Honest Adventure. Game Dev Chats. Some sort of dog. Entity Adam. Hey. The last minute. David Ortnow is doing some XAML. You know, I'm not really much of the XAML, but uh, we could go over there and, and uh, drop in on, on, uh, on David. That works for me. So just a little quick copy here. So we're going to get the raid ready. Everybody, thank you very much for joining me today. We'll see you over there in the raid. Make sure to hit the, uh, if you're a subscriber, hit the bada bing, bada boom uh, emoji. And we'll get on it. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you.